Hey everybody, me again. Uh, just uh, uploaded my video on my new AK's paint job. Seems to be going over really well. Had all kinds of positive comments. Uh, had one thumbs down from probably the same asshole who's got no life and thumbs down all my videos, but fuck them. Um, anyway, this is a video response and kind of a how-to guide. This is a video response for, um, I think his name is Gaiden or Gideon, G-I-D-A-N, who really liked my paint job and uh, wanted me to paint his gun for him. And uh, I'm flattered. As, you can, as I said, mine wasn't real professional, and uh, I feel bad taking money for a job I didn't feel was up to professional quality. But I can't do it anyway because you're in a different state than me and you can't ship it to me. But anyway... Um, I'm going to give you kind of a how-to as to how I did this. Um, really, it, you don't have to be a genius. Trust me, I had very little experience when I did this gun. It's not that difficult to do. Um, you just got to be patient and have the right materials. Uh, first thing you're going to need to do is take your gun and disassemble it as far down as you can get it. Uh, it'll be easier in AR than an AK in some cases. I took the AK down the receiver. I didn't grind off... Uh, any of the rivets or push the barrel rod or anything, but I took it all the way apart down past field strip. Um, you can take the trigger out if you want to. I didn't think it was necessary. But anyway, take your disassemble your weapon as far down as you feel comfortable doing. The next thing I want you to do is it really depends. Um, you can if it's a parkerized finish, um, you can just you need to get some sandpaper and sand it down till it's smooth. Parkerizing for the carrot coat and even the dura coat, you don't really have to do a lot of prep work on. But uh, it really it, it's going to depend on your paint. If you're if you're using regular paint, you'll need to do more prep work. Uh, I would recommend the first thing you do: strip it down, get you some degreaser, uh, lightning. Uh, what's that? Uh, something lightning. That's de grease lightning. Degreaser, uh, brake cleaner, acetone, whatever out there that'll degrease your weapon. Degrease it, clean all the gunk out of it, and get that first step in. Once you've got it all degreased, all cleaned, all disassembled. The next thing you're going to do is find you a pattern. Now, I went with the multicam pattern, but there's lots of patterns out there. You've got, uh, you know, there's classic chocolate chip pattern. That's pretty cool. You know, didn't work with the crap in the desert, but it still looks cool. Uh, I think he said he wanted a Marpat pattern, so you can do Marpat. Digicam was pretty cool, and this is really easy to make uh, templates for or make something unique. I don't know what the hell this is. But I saw this pattern, I was like, I don't know what that's for, but it just looks awesome. Three colors, real simple. Um, I don't know what pattern it is, but I might use that on another gun. I just found this at a fabric store, and I was like, oh, no, I was shopping with the uh, girlfriend, and she, I was like, jeez, I don't know what that is, but I'm going to take some of that, and I'll make something out of it. So that's the next thing. Find your pattern. Get you a piece of cloth, a piece of fabric, or something like that, and go make the pattern you want. Um, I took some some high quality painters tape get you some 3m or scott's the good stuff and lay out some big strips and get yourself a, a hobby knife like this and just use your your the fabric you got the pattern you got as a template if you don't have the, the, the fabric look on the internet there's lots of people who have patterns if you really want something that's real nice lower weaponry the guys who make duracoat hate to mention them again so they didn't use their product but they sell pre-made patterns and you can buy just the pattern they're kind of pricey they're like 70 bucks but you'll get the exact pattern you want if you want tiger stripe a marpat whatever if you're doing a digi camo don't buy the pattern get yourself some graph paper and make it with that that'll be real that's the easiest way to do it just cut out little sections make yourself the pattern that's going to take a long time but anyway get the pattern you want All right sorry about that my battery is managing to hold almost two minutes of charge nowadays i don't know what the problem is Anyway, once you get your pattern down, you got to find the colors you want for it. Now, um, for multicam and Marpat, stuff like that, it'll be easier because most of the manufacturers, even paint manufacturers, you can just call them and ask, hey, I want to make this pattern. Uh, what's your closest paint to that color? Uh, I know uh, Lau Weaponry has kits already set up for that color. I called Caracote and asked them, you know, I wanted paint that matched multicam, and they just told me, oh, you need this, 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 and this color. Most manufacturers are going to be pretty helpful. You can go online to, like, I think Testers, and uh, they sell model paint, and they've got the colors. We just use regular paint. Or just, you know, go out and take the fabric or print out with you. Go to, the, go to your paint store and match it up and find out, uh, you know, see what's the closest one. It doesn't have to be 100%. The thing with camouflage is you really want colors 
that are close to each other. You want a green and then a slightly lighter or slightly darker green. And then you want a brown or slightly lighter or darker brown. You want colors that you're going to find in nature and you want them similar but different. And then you want a mix of them to make a proper pattern. That's all camouflage mo that you're going to see mostly is. Um, so once you get that, you got your paint. As I said, clean your gun, get it get all, all degreased. Uh, I soaked as many parts as I could in a Ziploc bag full of degreaser. Um, or actually, not. A, I'm sorry, not a Ziploc bag, a glass bowl, so it wouldn't eat through the plastic. I was going to say, don't put it in a Ziploc bag, because that, that degreaser will eat through the plastic. Uh, it didn't hurt any of the polymer or anything, but this is the thin bags. So clean it all the way out, and then, if, depending on how far you want to go, I took mine down to the bare metal. I took a wire wheel to it, and you got to be real careful. You want to start digging into the, the steel. But if you get a, 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 a brass or a, a wire wheel, um, it'll clean it off pretty good. Just take it. I took all the parkerizing off. of You don't have to go that far. A lot of them will bind with parkerizing real well. So take that all the way off. You want to go just all out. Or just get you some 4, 500, 600 grit sandpaper and sand it all down. Get it as smooth as you can get it. Uh, it'll stick to a smooth surface. It's, you're technically roughing it up, but it'll feel smooth to your fingers. If, if you've painted a lot, you'll, you'll know what I mean. Just smooth it all out as best you can. And then what you want to do is then figure out what your base coat is. Now on multicam, it's a, it's a, it's a medium to dark green color. Um, but that's the hardest part, so find out what your base is. Some people say it's the lightest color. Some people stay with the darkest color. I say stick with the lightest. That's the one that works best for me. Um, but you don't have to. If they're if they're close colors like the multicam, you know, just just take the pattern you want and find out what the most logical one is. Like if I was doing this, I'm going to start out with the white. It's all in the background, and then start with the lighter tan, and then go over with the brown. So you kind of have to use logic to do it. If you're doing the something like the uh, the Marpat here, I'd probably start with the green because you can just tell there's since more the brown and the black kind of tend to go on it. It's, it's hard to tell. You'll have to just use some common sense. And if you call a place that's got patterns, they'll tell you, oh, start with this color and then go to this color. So that I can't really tell you. That's going to depend on your pattern. You just have to make common sense. So anyway, got it your weapon. Got it all sanded down. Okay, you got your base color. All right, now how do I put it on? This is where things get tricky um, it, and it can be kind of expensive. If you don't have an air compressor, um, you're probably going to have to go bite the bullet and get one. Now, that doesn't mean you have to spend 300 bucks on one. I got from uh, the little, what is this sucker, a central pneumatic air compressor from Harbor Freight for about 80 bucks. It's got a water tap on it, and it's easy. You plug it in and turn it on, and it does everything for you, and you can adjust the pressure up and down. <coughs> now, you're saying, well, I don't, I don't know what pressure to have it. Well, that's okay. Get you an airbrush. Don't buy a cheap ass twenty-five dollar Chinese airbrush because your fingers are going to end up. Well, if you can see it online, your hands. Come on, you can see your, mine are still a little green. Yeah, it's been three days. It's coming off, but that crap's going to leak. And if you get like Duracoat or Keracoat or something thicker than paint, um, it's going to leak all out of the gun. It's going to gum up the gun. So spend that. And then I went to Hobby Lobby. But any hobby store, like Michael's or something like that, will really probably do it. Get yourself a decent air gun. Probably about 50, 60, 70, 80 bucks. You don't need something ridiculous, but get something decent. Something with, with some nozzles on it and something you can clean out. Uh, and that way you can adjust it. And this will tell you what you have to set the air pressure to on your air gun. Now, I am not an air gun expert, a uh, spray gun expert. I, but I could read instructions, and this said 20 psi for this, 30 psi for thicker paints. Da 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 da. So I put my air gun on 30 psi. I just took some uh, just some material, some paper, and just sprayed it out. Adjusted it till it was a nice thick. It was a thick coat, but not too thick and not runny. And then I sprayed it from there, and that's pretty much it. Spray your whole gun, all the individual pieces. Make sure they don't touch anything. If you can hang them, that's the best way to do it. Spray around them and let it dry. Now, if you're using Keracote or, oh god, I still got some left. You know, even Duracote here. Um, it's going to take longer than some type of paints. So you spray them all, and I'd say let them set a good 12 hours um, at least, would probably be recommended, depending on the gun. Because what you want to do is you spray it all in the base coat, and if you're doing camouflage, the best thing to do is once you've got it sprayed, is to reassemble it. <coughs> if you got an AK, 
some of the parts are going to be metal on metal and it'll scratch. Now, in most places, it doesn't matter because there's going to be places scratching where you can't see, like, um, you know, around here, around the barrel clamp, and areas like that. So you might have little scratches here and there, but you can always touch them up. It is paint. So you just got to sand them back off. That's the other thing. Don't be scared if you screw up. It's just paint. You can take some sandpaper, and if it's really tough, a little acetone or whatever, and take the paint off and let it dry off and spray it again. No harm done. You're not going to hurt it. So, like I said, sand it all off, spray it the base color, and then let it dry real well. If you're just doing spray paint, you'll be ready in probably an hour. If you're doing, like, uh, an enamel paint, give it four or five hours. Like, if you're doing Duracoat or Caracoat, you probably should wait at least 12. Reassemble it, and that's when you want to start laying your patterns. Now, you need to, when you put a, the first pattern down, um, I would recommend using what they call male stencils. Get your big stencil cut out around it, and the stencil is the area of the base that you don't want. You want to lay it down. Like if this was green and I'm spraying the next color brown, that's the area I want to be green is what I cover up. I know it's common sense, but it gets confusing. So put that down. Oh, my camera's going to die again. I'm going to have to make this couple parts. Uh, spray the next coat over it. And if you're between your first color and your second color, I try to leave it like 50-50. You know, half the original color, half the new color. That's my rule, but, you know, it's flexible. It depends on the pattern you're doing, too. But generally, that's what I try and do. Once you set that, let that dry for about three or four hours, 30 minutes if it's spray paint, and then lay on the next layer. Now, the paint, the, the tape's going to stick. So if you can sit outside in the summer and let it bake on, it'll dry faster. Um, but that's the best thing I could say is just do that. And if you're patient with it, it'll turn out real well. It's real easy. You just got to have the equipment and just be patient. And like I said, I'm not professional. I wouldn't want to do this for money because, you know, I'm not a professional. There's people out there who will do it. But, they're you know, they're going to charge you for it because they've got a paint shop on the supplies. But my video here is just a how-to for somebody who just wants to try it and doesn't have a lot of money like I did and just wants to, you know, get something decent, you know, that they don't plan on doing it for money. I've had probably six requests now for people, hey, dude, can you paint my gun? I'd love to do it. I'd do it for free. I liked painting it. I just don't have, I don't have an FFL, so I can't get your guns. But um, I really, like, you know, I'm glad I got so many positive comments on it. And uh, the best thing I can tell you is just don't use cheap parts. Make sure you get 3M or Scotch tape. If you're making patterns, use the good tape, otherwise it's going to leak underneath of it. Don't go cheap on it. Buy a decent airbrush. The air compressor, get a decent one. Don't go crazy. Mine was 80 bucks. So I looked at this the project. It was probably $100 for paint, $100 for the airbrush, and $100 for the um, air compressor rounded up all the parts. So it's 300 bucks. But you know what? I can Other than paint, I can do as many guns now as I want. And I've got an air, you know, an air compressor and an airbrush I can do all kinds of cool stuff for. So you're going to have to put a little bit in it, but if you go online and look, it's probably about $350, $400 for somebody to paint or hydro dip your gun. So, you know, you do it, you do it the way you want it, you get it how you want it. If you're, just, if you're not nervous, it'll turn out okay. If you screw it up, sand it off and start over. If you screw it up on the second coat, put a, put a patch over it and start over. So that's the other thing, is once you do the male sections, get you a female stencil where you have the big solid piece and you've cut out the color you want. And make those smaller and put that over where you, the next layer you want. It, it'll be easier to, you, if you see somebody making stencils, you'll see how it is. It sounds kind of weird as I'm explaining it. Go watch somebody have, have their stencils and you'll see. But if you got screw up and you got a place that's a little smudged or something, put the female stencil on it and paint over it. If it's got a bubble or something, wait for it to all the way dry and sand it down a little and spray over it. It's really easy to fix. It's just paint. So. Um, anyway, I think that's about it. I hope that helps you, man. I'm, I'm glad you liked it. I'm, I'm, I got all kinds of positive comments, so uh, I hope everybody apparently thinks it's pretty sweet. So uh, one guy said that's the most operator rifle I've ever seen, and I think I said oh, the only thing I'm qualified to operate is a microwave oven, but thanks. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. If you got any specific questions about this, let me know. I'll be happy to help. Uh, I, you said I use Caracoat for the paint. I know Lara Weaponry has a whole setup for this exact same thing, Duracoat with the patterns and everything. It's about $180. I went and checked a minute ago, uh, maybe a little less. But like I said, best recommendations I get for you, get a decent airbrush. It will make your life easier and take your time. Do the. It took me four days to prep this and two and a half days to paint it. So just take your time, clean it off, clean it real thoroughly. And you know, if, you're, if it's a gun thing, it's going to be labor of love anyway. You're going to take your time. Just be patient with it. And don't be one of those idiots winning instant gratification on everything, and it'll look good. So I hope that helps you guys. If you got any questions, let me know. If you're local, you want me to help you do it. If you're local in Atlanta area and i got some time off, I'll be happy to help you with it. Uh, I'm not looking forward to doing it again. It is a hassle. 
Uh, it'd be nice. I mean, I had to live in an apartment, so I had to do it on the back porch. That tells you what kind of facilities I had. None. I just kind of set up like a mini spray booth out there with what I had. So if you had a, if I had a basement or a shop, it would have been much better and looked even better. But for a three-day job outside with limited supplies, I think it turned out pretty nice. So uh, that's I guess that's it. I think I've said that three times already. Um, I guess I'll talk to you guys later. See ya.